Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Red Raptor Writes. I love getting to watch these documentaries, accurate or inaccurate. There are so many that I haven't seen until I made the episode, so it feels like I'm expanding my horizons. I can only hope that you guys at home are learning half as much as I am. Once again, I never claim to know everything, but I do my best to research before writing a script. That brings us to Giants of Patagonia, yet another new dino doc for me. This short film is very similar to Land of Giants, the second Chased by Dinosaurs episode, because they both take place in Argentina during the Tyronean stage of the late Cretaceous. Here, we're shown the giant Carcharodontosaurids and the largest land animal of all time, Argentinosaurus. While both documentaries cover the same material, they do differ in presentation and in quality, so Giants of Patagonia is still worth checking out in case you're like me and missed it. So, without further interruption, let's dig this up. Pretty much, there are only two dinosaurs for us to look at, so this should also be a pretty short episode. This also means we get to go more in depth with them, which is nice. To start things off, let's talk about Patagonia itself. This is the southernmost region in South America, encompassing much of what is now Argentina and Chile. Its portrayal in the Cretaceous is pretty on point, as a mostly arid environment with seasonal streams. I'm totally sold that I'm looking at the Huancol Formation. Thankfully, this is where Mapusaurus and Argentinosaurus belong. It would be nice to see some other contemporaries such as Scorpiovenator, Limesaurus, and Gualicho, but I'll take what I can get. This is a short, focused dino doc that does well with the subjects it has, even if there are mainly just two. It is called Giants of Patagonia and not Moderately Sized of Patagonia. Who are you who are so wise in the ways of science? When it comes to Mapusaurus, it is something of an improvement over Land of Giants. For one, the proportions look a little better, with less exaggerated arms and a bigger, longer head. And two, these are actually referred to as Mapusaurus. Yes, that problem should have gone into the outdated section of my Chase by Dinosaurs review. Before Mapusaurus was described back in 2006, its remains were assumed to belong to the slightly earlier Giganotosaurus, which may have been their ancestor. Several differences have been noted between the two, with the latter having a less elongated snout, taller neurospines, and a longer fibula. The initial confusion caused a still ongoing misconception that Giganotosaurus and Argentinosaurus coexisted, which I may have dealt with too harshly before. Perhaps I treated you too harshly. In 2007 though, this problem should have been and was cleared up. I also appreciate what looks like more mob behavior than organized pack hunting. While the narrator and paleontologist hype it up as pack hunting, what was shown is more in line with loose, organized gangs, which would be more likely. Like always, just because several predators of the same species were buried together, it doesn't necessarily mean that they lived together. Loose mobbing, infighting, a predator trap, drought, and combinations of these things would cause Mapusaurus to congregate. Okay, okay, so what about their prey, the mighty Argentinosaurus? Well, they're pretty good too. Once again, they are correctly stated as being the currently confirmed largest sauropod and by extension, largest land animal of all time. Damn boy, he's sick! Mainstream articles tend to clickbait whenever a large titanosaur is found, calling them the largest ever. This happened with Patagotitan and the recently described Australotitan. It's difficult to tell exactly what dimensions these massive creatures had, since their fossils are pretty fragmentary, but from what's known, recent estimates have given Argentinosaurus estimates between 65 and 75 metric tons, as opposed to its 50 ton competition. Higher estimates for the champ are given due to its longer and thicker femur and larger dorsal vertebrae. This dino doc does well with their feet too, making them look like giant pillars, unlike the all too common elephantine look we're used to seeing. I like the Argentinosaurus head too. Again, these guys are fragmentary and titanosaur skulls in general are rare, but some of them like Sarmientosaurus show an appropriately macronarian looking head with a wide mouth and crest, while the smaller Rapetosaurus looked more diplodocid. Either way, the Brachiosaurus-like skull kinda works. Lastly, I do need to compliment the inclusion of feathers. Unenlagia is given a full coat and wings, while young Longtooth gets some downy fluff. 
probably to keep warm. Well, this hasn't been confirmed in any theropod, it's an interesting bit of speculation. Once again, there isn't too much I can call outdated. This is a shorter one, plus we're nearly halfway to the present from where we started. The one thing that stood out to me is a small detail, but the more the merrier when it comes to knowledge. Take it friends! Arm yourselves with knowledge! In this movie, Mapusaurus is called a Giganotosaur, within the subfamily Giganotosaurine. This subfamily was erected back in 2006, along with the discovery of Mapusaurus. Giganotosaurus itself and most likely Tyranotitan were included also, all being very similar South American Carcharodontosaurids. Since then, this subfamily has stopped being used. Now they're all recognized as not only belonging to the same family, but also included in the subfamily Carcharodontosaurinae. But there is still a tribe called Giganotosaurini for those giant sudden predators. By the way, as someone who tries to decipher these dino docs and exactly what they mean, it's annoying when they constantly refer to something as a something sore because that can have different meanings. Although outdated, I appreciate this film's ability to specify with the subfamily ending in A, so I know they're referring to members of this specific group. Other times, when only sore is used, it may be shorthand for Saurus, being a genus name, or it can mean a member of a family like id. Like how Prenocephalae can be called a Pachycephalosaur or a Pachycephalosaurid, since it's in that family for example. This is extra hard to decipher when the narrator gives a plural family name, like the infamous Carcharodontosaurs from Planet Dinosaur. Strike that. Reverse it. It can sound awfully close to a generic name, and I still hold to it that although on paper those guys were Erosteon, they were made to be Carcharodontosaurus. Since we're talking about families, a lesser YouTuber would probably put one of the Dom family memes, but that meme was total trash and never funny, so I won't do that to you. I only strive for quality. Anyway, mini rant over. Let's get back to the review. One more thing, there's some fascinating news on the shark toothed dinosaurs. We only get a few glimpses of the babies, but a new study suggests that the family Compsognatidae is a polyphyletic group meaning that they don't represent a natural grouping of animals with a common ancestor. In fact, it is hypothesized that the amazingly preserved theropod, Scipionyx, actually represents a hatchling Carcharodontosaurid. The unfused bones, super small size, and giant orbits are all indications that it's a youngling. So maybe in future films with these massive killers, they're designed to reflect some debunked compsignatids. Oh man, we were just on the verge of greatness. As a short movie on these Cretaceous Titans, it does very well, but it could do better. Aight, once again, we're shown the total paleo fail that is the 80 foot Leo Pluridon. Okay, really, what we're shown is 60 feet, but the narrator claims they grew up to 80 feet. Shut up! Just shut up, you idiot! Large pliosaur fossils have been found from Europe to Mexico, but none of these can be attributed to the Leoplorodon genus, and none of them have been given 25 meter estimates. This wouldn't be a dino doc review without complaining about pronated wrists. He can't keep getting away with it! He can't keep getting away with it! Along with that mess comes some pretty severe shrink wrapping. Remember, dinosaurs are just animals, they had flesh on top of the bones we see in museums. I've used up enough oxygen on these topics, so let's move on to the cool predator Unenlagia. Now, these guys have been ping-ponged in and out of Dromaeosauridae over the past few decades. Any comments I can add will probably be outdated in a few months. As of 2020, they've been given their own family, more derived than the raptors were used to. But, as of 2021, they've been put back as basal dromaeosaurids. Either way, the Unenlagia here is correctly given a feathery covering, but has a skull shape way too similar to Deinonychus, being taller than the correct thin, long snouts they had. Well, yes, paleontologists originally didn't know about their strange snoots. By 2007, the close relative, Butraraptor, was already known. Australaptor followed soon after with a description in 2008. To be fair though, the skull of Butraraptor wasn't described until over a decade later, so I could see the argument for this being more of an outdated situation. The last problem I should mention is how, once again, we get the clickbaity, 
bigger than T-Rex argument. If somebody said it was a happy little tale, if somebody told you three species in this group surpassed the famous T-Rex in terms of size. Somebody lied. Advertisement 101, if you want a carnivore to seem cool, just call it larger than T-Rex, even if it wasn't. That's what happens here. None of the big three members of Giganata Sorini are given mass estimates greater than large T-Rex individuals, even if they were slightly longer, which they probably were not. Lengthwise, they maxed out at 40 feet, aside from the Giga, with a 43 foot max length, comparable to the largest T-Rex. But again, T-Rex was heavier, being a wider, bulkier animal. So by mass, Tyrannosaurus is still the largest theropod ever known. But if we are going by length, then Spinosaurus takes it. So, sorry guys. I went over this in a little more detail in my Chased by Dinosaurs episode, so check that out if you're interested. Dinosaurs, Giants of Patagonia is a sleep hitter for me. While there are some areas that need work in the designs, and details about the Carcharodontosaurids need a big update, there is still a lot that holds up surprisingly well. I would call this a vast improvement on the Land of Giants episode. We'll definitely see Mapusaurus and Argentinosaurus improve in the future review of Planet Dinosaur, but for now, I feel comfortable granting this film a respectable B. That was pretty good. Thanks to those who recommended it. As a first time viewer, I'm kind of impressed. Totally not a waste of my time like Valley of the T-Rex. Remember, if you enjoyed this episode, to please leave a like, subscribe, and check out my social media. See you next time.